It defies the timeline of human engineering. It challenges the periodic table. And according to the latest analyses from MIT and independent laboratories, it is waking up. In March 2025, an object crashed into the rural hills of Buga, Colombia. It wasn't a meteorite. It wasn't a satellite. It was a sphere, polished to a mirror finish, containing technology that we are only just beginning to theorize today. But the true shock didn't come from the crash site. It came from the University of Georgia's radiocarbon labs. Organic resin sealed inside the device's core returned a date that shouldn't be possible 12,560 years ago. This machine was built 7,000 years before the pyramids. It was forged before humans invented the wheel. And yet, inside its shell, it holds the secrets of fiber optics, superconductivity, and a mission that, terrifyingly, appears to be incomplete. March 2, 2025, Rural Columbia. Residents report a silver object moving with intelligent control, zigzagging against the wind, ignoring aerodynamic drag. It didn't fall, it descended. When it finally collided with high-voltage power lines, it didn't crumple. It tore through the steel cables without sustaining a scratch. First responder Jose Aras described the object as ice-cold, despite the fetching of entry. When water from a canteen hit the surface, it didn't run off. It vaporized instantly. This was the first anomaly, a thermal barrier that defied thermodynamics. But the physics got stranger once the object was moved to a secure facility. Upon recovery, the sphere weighed exactly two kilograms. Hours later, in the same room, under the same gravity, the weight spiked to 10 kilograms. It quintupled its own mass without changing size. Physics tells us mass is constant. The Buga sphere tells us our physics might be incomplete. Dr. Jose Luis Velasquez ordered an immediate X-ray. He expected to see a solid casting or a hollow shell. What he saw on the monitor made him freeze. The scan revealed three concentric layers of metal housing 18 microspheres arranged in a lattice of perfect geometric symmetry. No welds, no seams, no rivets. At the center lay a component that looked disturbingly like a processing chip connected to the outer shell by 52 filaments. Under spectroscopy, these filaments weren't wire, they were glass, fiber optics. But not just any optics, these strands exhibited lower optical signal loss than the most advanced telecommunications cables produced in 2024. To anchor these delicate glass threads, the creators used a natural resin, and this was their mistake, or perhaps their message. Because unlike metal, resin is organic, and unlike metal, organic material can be dated. The samples were sent to the University of Georgia and corroborated by labs at MIT. They ran the tests three times, assuming contamination. The result was always the same. The resin was harvested 12,560 years ago. Let's put that in perspective. 12,560 years ago, humans were hunter-gatherers using stone tools. We had not yet domesticated the horse. We had not yet built Jericho. Yet, we are expected to believe that in this era of ice and stone, someone mined titanium, Someone refined aluminum, a process that requires 1,000-degree electrolysis and wasn't invented until 1886. Someone isolated neodymium in cerium, rare earth elements we only mastered in the 20th century. The metallurgy alone is a smoking gun. The alloy is harder than aerospace-grade titanium and possesses self-healing properties. When researchers scratched the middle layer, the metal regenerated within 48 hours, closing the gap like a healing wound. This is what Dr. Gary Nolan calls the architecture of the impossible, a device built with 21st century materials using 25th century engineering, 
buried in a 13th millennium BC strata. Why 12,560 years ago? For geologists, that date is a siren. It marks the exact moment of the Younger Dryas onset, a cataclysmic period where Earth's climate snapped, temperatures plummeted, megafauna vanished, the Clovis people disappeared from the archaeological record, evidence points to a comet impact or massive solar instability, it was a planetary reset. And right there, in the middle of the apocalypse, someone built this. Is the Bugosphere a time capsule, a black box recording the death of a lost civilization? Or is it something more functional? New theories suggest that if advanced civilizations existed back then, they would have lived on the coastlines. Today, those coastlines are 400 feet underwater. We've mapped more of the surface of Mars than we have of our own continental shelves. If the creators of this sphere vanished, their cities are likely drowned in the deep, waiting. But the sphere didn't just survive the cataclysm. It seems to have been waiting for the next one. For months, the object was silent. Then, as Earth's current magnetic field began to show signs of weakening, a phenomenon mirroring the Younger Dryas event, the sphere woke up. It began with pulses, not random interference, but synchronized intervals, 34.5 hertz, a frequency associated with biological neural rhythms. MIT's signal processing team noticed the pattern first. The sphere wasn't just emitting energy, it was reacting. When exposed to specific electromagnetic stimuli, the engravings on the surface, initially thought to be decorative, began to glow. These weren't symbols, they were circuits. And then, at 2.14 a.m. on a Tuesday, the unthinkable happened. The sphere emitted a high-energy pulse. Simultaneously, sensors 600 miles away detected a harmonic shadow, a faint, identical signal responding from deep underground. It wasn't an echo, it was a reply. The Bugosphere is not a solitary artifact, it is a node in a network, and for the first time in 12,000 years, the network is coming online. We are left with a terrifying conclusion. The sphere's internal architecture mimics what we call distributed computing. It is designed to process data, adapt, and communicate. It is made of materials that shouldn't exist, dated to a time when they couldn't exist, and is now broadcasting to locations we cannot access. If this device was built by a human civilization that was wiped out by a climate catastrophe, then its activation right now, as our own climate destabilizes, is a warning. But if it wasn't built by humans, if the 18 geometric spheres in the optical lattice are the work of something else, then we have been under surveillance since the Stone Age. The sphere is awake. It has sent its signal. Now we're just waiting to see who or what comes to answer it.